Y'all, we're out here at Glen Cove. Got the HBX protector. Yep, I got my little simple chest rig for my Femi Palm here. It's just a lanyard, <laughs> a lanyard strapped it in the chest. Pretty cool. Here with the bro, he invited me out for some RC action. He's got the. Um, oh, he's got my gimbal too. Oh dang! I'm trying to see this Nike gimbal. Bag. Some gimbal action. Look at that cute little Nike bag. Right. Anyway. So I guess we're testing the gimbal out today too. It's pretty cool. We're here at Glen Cove Waterfront Park, GVRD Greater Valley Recreation District. We're gonna go. Down by the tiny little beach they got over there. It's kind of in that direction. So, uh, yep, I'm about halfway through this battery here. We ran this uh, lunchtime a couple days ago when I was at work. We went to lunch for Xavier's birthday. And they ordered uh, before we got there. So, by the time we were done eating, it's like 15 minutes left. So, came back to the office with me. We got a little, uh, there's a little hop in the parking lot near my office, so we kind of drove around there a little bit. Yep, used about, uh, yeah, like I said, 50% oh, of the battery. Oh, dog coming. All right. Here we go. There's the ECX. What's the call again? ECX Torment. Torment. There you go. I've got the Protector and the Tormentor. Yep, so. Little hands free here, should be nice. Hello. Be good to your neighbors, always be good to your neighbors. So it's uh, about 30 minutes to sundown here. No smoking, no vaping, no marijuana, guys. <laughs> Whoa! So, he's got the little uh, crazy tires on there kicking up dirt in my face. Disrespectful. Yeah, he's got a brushless motor in there, so it's pretty major. And it looks like there was a fire here recently. Look at that. This was this all was this all burnt last time we came here? It was not, was it? What? This was not burnt last time we came here. Oh shit. Those damn firework kids. Irresponsible firework people. I bet they came down here. They're like, oh yeah, we're right by the water and we should buy the water things don't catch fire. I mean, what else causes fires around this time? It might be the smokers and the vapors. Always a possibility. Alright. There we go. So, maybe about 5-10 minutes left in this battery. I'll just take it down. Right down by the beach. Left, left phone. Alright, we'll go get it. Just go drive back and forth, no? I don't... Now I gotta be responsible for two RC cars. I said now I gotta be responsible for two RC cars. Oh, it's high tide. Okay, maybe we won't stay here for too long. Not a whole lot of runway. Alright, we'll just leave it there then. Leave it over here. No room for high speed, so... Usually, all of this... You, the rocks here are all exposed, but... At the moment, not the case. We'll be lucky if we can get over there. In fact, we'll be lucky if we can get back. Look at this, the water's really coming in. Yeah, can't get, 
Can't access that part unless touch a little bit of water. Dare we? We're going for it. Ooh. So this is salt water right here. You gotta be careful with the car, otherwise it's gonna get some corrosion action. Now I this car has been somewhat submerged in salt water before. Not here at Glen Cove, but at the Benicia Beach. Over there it's a little bit more unforgiving. But uh, anyway, here I am. Just gotta be extra careful not to back into the water. In fact, we should probably just not come here. <laughs> we should probably just go back. Oh, oh there's a battery. It might be a sign. It might be a sign that we shouldn't pursue this pursuit. Yep, there it is. So you can tell when this thing's battery's out, when gas and it just drips back up a little bit like that. If you lift it up off the ground, it's fine, but the slightest bit of resistance is gonna not run. Great car though, great car. Okay, I think the tides definitely come up even since I first passed. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Waterproof shoes. Waterproof boots. All right, we're not going to do that. So lo and behold, the tide has come in. I say we skip. I say we skip. I mean, don't leave it at the bottom of the steps where anyone at the top of the steps can see that there's a whole bunch of equipment here. Yeah, the tide's coming in. You can barely get around that plant. Yeah. We'll just run it up here. Yeah, a little bit of charge in it. Yeah. Slowly waning. So Zave's got a little old 10th scale Porsche body on there from the old RC car we used to have. As you can see, it's quite quick. Quite quick. This car maxes out about 15 miles an hour, which is really, I mean, all you need. It'll go 15 miles per hour on any kind of terrain, which is nice. And there's the battery again, so I think this is it. We got another one. Ah, so the process with this car. Gravel's out. This thing's been put through some paces, but it's holding together quite nicely. Happy to report. Yeah, but I got one more. I got one more. So, got your car. So, got the pins. The cool thing about this is it's got like pretty symmetrical design here, aside from the servo, which is kind of off to the right, but uh, everything is pretty well balanced. I haven't uh, put it on like a corner balancer or anything like that, but you get the idea. Generally speaking, very well put together. Is this even in the frame? Let's see. It is. It is in the frame. All right. So batteries out. Let's get our spare batteries. Okay. So the ones that they come with, there's a pair A, pair B. It's got little duct tape tabs on there, so you can remove it from the car very easily. Yeah. Otherwise, you can always. Uh, one thing I've used. I have spare batteries for this car. One thing you can do is, uh, so once it's in there, and if you don't have tabs on it, so nipple forward, uh, nipple forward, okay. If you don't have tabs, you can just use this little corner and you can kind of pry it out like that and pull it out that way, but not an issue here since we have those. So, put this in, there we go, get your pins back in. There. Oops. I'm sure it's the top ones, otherwise it doesn't go in. There you go. More. Another 
there was oh. two sets of holes, oh. funny enough. Uh-oh. Is it centered? You gotta center it. Make sure it's centered so it's the, the motors aren't working as hard. The more centered it is, the less wear it is on the motors and the batteries, so. There it goes. What do you think you're again? I don't know. I think it's three taps. One, two, three. On the mode button. Well, you have to like place it in the middle of these, so turn it off. Look at this, all these robot cameras out here. What a time to be alive. Right, okay. okay, so set it down. Set it Where's down. the legs? Yeah, well, like set it flat, like here. What? Set it down flat. Okay, and then you position, see that it says right there, phone camera direction, okay, and then you put it about in the center. Yeah, but it's going to cover that, that button, the, on, the, uh, the control on and off button. All right, see, so it's mostly leaning that way. So you want it to lean more. Just a little bit more. Are you sure? Yes, this is, this is, you got to read the direction of that. See? Okay, a little bit more. Let go, let go. There you go, that's centered. Mm. All right, and then power it on. How do you power it on? Hold this. All right, there you go. Yeah, so when it's centered, when it's in the middle, it's not going to put as much wear on the, the motor because it doesn't have to compensate for off balance, right? Yeah. Yeah. So here, I'll, I'll take it from you in a second. So this is a fresh battery. You can tell it's got quite a bit more power. A bit more, quite a bit more top speed. But that's pretty much top speed. Not as fast as ECX. Hey man, reliable, long run time. There you go, gimbal action. So one of the cool things about this gimbal design is that the articulating arm in the back is off to the angle. Ah, Jesus. Oops. Careful, man. Kicking up rocks in people's in my face. Yep, so Zay's got big paddle tires on the back, so good grip, good stability on gravel, but. And good acceleration, also, might I add. This car, you know, well rounded. Nice and consistent on gravel. So the cool thing is around here, there's the gravel and then there's like the rubber inlay that goes underneath. So the rubber inlay keeps the gravel in place and also serves as an extra gripping point for when you're walking on cushion. Slightly more cushiony, I guess you would say. Really love the all-wheel drive on this thing. It'll stabilize very easily. See that? Which way do you want the car to go? Just turn. Yeah. yeah, I drive a Subaru and I, I can say that in many ways this car handles very similarly to how a Subaru with symmetrical all-wheel drive handles because it's got symmetrical all-wheel drive. I'd say the power split is more of a 50-50 compared to like a like the 60-40 split. I think there's more towards the front depending on which sewer you get. Or it might be 50-50, honestly I'm not sure. But there's a lift-off turn-in, works pretty well. It's not as jarring in a real car because, you know, the thing with the Subaru is because the four-wheel drive, the idea is you maintain more grip, you don't have as much of this lift-off oversteer. But if you really chuck the car, you'll, you'll get it to turn. It can be a bit pretty crazy when that does happen. Yep. It's that nice little gravel spot to run the cars.
car is two wheel drive, rear wheel drive. Holds pretty well. I'm going to film for you. <laughs> 